how does it strike you that God's plan of salvation would depend upon the willingness of a young woman living in an obscure village in a remote province to trust a vision. A vision that tells her that God wants her to conceive a child. And by the way, the salvation of the world would hinge on her willingness to trust that vision. Think about that. There's two ways that I can imagine Mary. Two ways. One, I can imagine her as a frightened little girl, overwhelmed by events far beyond her control. Just this simple, rural, uneducated, child of God, chosen to be the vessel of grace. That's one way of looking at it. And there is another way to view Mary. And I think it is a way that is more faithful to how Luke describes her and describes the event. Because here we really find a determined, a strong, assertive woman. A woman of power and of influence, educated and sharp and committed. She's resourceful, competent, and clear. And we need to remember that it was from her that Jesus learned much of what he knew about God's will for him. The key to understanding of Mary comes at the heart of today's text. And we identify that from the poem sung by Mary. For there's that Latin translation of the first words of the Magnificat. And that is, my soul magnifies the Lord. Kind of like a breath of heaven. When your soul is magnifying the Lord. An internal soul recognizing it. Your soul can also magnify the Lord. It can. Because one thing is for sure today as we look at that story, and that is that the soul that magnifies the Lord has the mind open, and I want to underscore the word unconventional. Something about the unconventional ways of God provides a remarkable opportunity for miraculous things to happen. Take, for instance, the virgin birth. Many of us will accept the virgin birth. And we do so on the basis of biblical authority. We'll come to a place and say, well, it's in the scripture. It says it. But why we may say we believe in the virgin birth, do we understand it? Okay. <laughs> a friend of mine has a story about his sixth grade daughter. And her name was Angela. And Angela was a very bright 
and insightful girl, but she does not understand everything she hears in church, okay? Like many of us, we, we can maybe identify with that. And one day, Angela was in the cafeteria at school, and one of her curious friends just asked her, Angela, are you a virgin? Okay. She was really on the spot. Because she didn't know what the word meant. She had no idea what it meant. But she did some quick, quick thinking. And she kind of processed some things. And she recalled that the only virgin she had ever heard about was Mary. And everyone knew that Mary had a baby. So Angela's connected some dots, and she came to the conclusion that therefore a virgin must be a woman who had a baby. And so armed with that conclusion, Angela announced largely in the cafeteria, I am not a virgin. Several people nearby registered to their shock. And one of the cafeteria workers whispered into her ear, Angela, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Well, many of us, adults included, I don't think we know what we're talking about when we start talking about the virgin birth. But as I understand it, this birth means that Jesus came from God. That's what it is getting at. He is God's son. And the emphasis is not primarily on Mary but is on the creative, life-giving power of Almighty God. So realize this, and that is Jesus is not the product of some kind of human evolution, but is the product of an intervention of a transcendent God into human history. Chew on that. Can you receive the unconventional ways of God and connect with Him? When we can do that, our souls will have an opportunity to magnify the Lord. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut. We can't figure it out. And what someone rightfully said, a rut essentially is a grave with the ends kicked out of it. You can't move beyond. But something about the unconventional provides an avenue for the miraculous hand of God to do things. And so when we take our Kind of our, our annual Sunday where we look at Mary, the mother of God, born of a virgin, and all the story of that and what that means. It essentially talks about the unconventional ways that God can bring about a remarkable thing as God has intervened in human history. So, you think of what she said. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered to the angel, may your word to me be fulfilled. What is God's word for you? What are you grappling with that perhaps may be a vision, if you will, of what God wants to do in your life and the difference you can make. 
And is there room for it to perhaps be in an unconventional way? And it's precisely there that Mary helps to prepare us in this season of Advent by realizing through her how God acts through ordinary human beings like you and me. Ordinary human beings that trust God enough to undertake extraordinary missions beyond their capabilities and clearly beyond their imaginations. Now I know and I recognize that there is a side of us we're just uncomfortable when God acts that way. We want God to appear in person, unmediated by anyone else, even by angels as awesome as Gabriel must have been. But we seldom know God comes directly except in the person of Jesus. And then it is only as God incarnate. So how many of us understand that just as then it is true today, God is waiting for each one of us to say, let it be to me according to your word. I want to do it. And that posture is to be at the forefront of our life from the moment we are born until the very day God calls us home. That is our mission to be about. Just as God waited for Mary to say it. Well, like Mary... If you think about it, we cannot fully understand what is going on. I don't understand it, but I believe it. I accept it. Like her, we can only remember that we are members of a community of Christ followers whose life story is a story of God's action on behalf of the whole world. And just like Mary, we cannot foresee what the future will be if we accept God's will other than we know it will be a blessed adventure. Like Mary, we can only know that because we are members of the body of Christ, God also has no other hands and hearts and minds in the world but ours. How do you think this place got decorated? It's because human beings took their hands and they got involved. How do you build a building? People get involved. How, how do you, you bring help to someone who's hurting and crying? You reach out to them. You do it as individuals. God has no hands but ours. And will we say, as Mary said, may it be to me according to your word and your will. And just like Mary, for us today, we can only know that if, God's will is to be accomplished in this world. We must play our part as Mary played hers. So as we go about our work days, taking care of Christmas plans, going on all those holiday errands, doing those things we do during this month, as we go about all of our, our daily responsibilities, let us recall 
Gabriel's greeting in our minds and our hearts as he greeted Mary. Because God is waiting for the holy child of Bethlehem to be born in us, and he cannot be born in us unless we are prepared, like Mary, to give over ourselves, our souls, and even our bodies to him. The holy child cannot be born in us unless we, like Mary, find faith and courage to let it be.